Welcome everybody to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. We have a fantastic episode up for you tonight. Dan Class is our special guest from the Hinsdale House. And we also have special co-host this evening, Katie Hopkins, coming up next. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. I'm author and ghost historian Mike Ricksecker. With me tonight as my co-host is Katie Hopkins. She's one of our Haunted Road media authors. She is from Unknown Darkness up there in Iowa. And uh, we're looking forward to publishing another one of her books coming this fall. And then there's Dan pointing. <laughs> then our special guest for this evening, Dan Class, uh, down there in the bottom, what is that, right-hand corner? Uh, from the Hinsdale House Restoration Project uh, within these walls on Viddy Space, and he's also part of Ghost Finders now. Dan, happy to have you aboard. Welcome, my friend. Good to be back finally after all these years. Yeah, yeah. I've been meaning <laughs> to get you on for a long time. Yeah. Um, I know I was on your show there for a while and um, a, a couple of times, and I was like, man, we need to get Dan on. And uh, we finally made it happen. So great to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, Hinsdale House, I still, again, I have not yet been there. I'm going to rectify that this fall. But um, so let's let's get in this. You know, you're a paranormal investigator uh, for a number of years, and then you came across the Hinsdale House, which was disheveled and dilapidated. Right. And now you've uh, done a fantastic job of restoring it and have turned it into this uh, paranormal research center. Yeah, yeah, that's basically the, the story in a nutshell. Uh, it was, uh, you know, I, I, my co-founder of the Greater West New York Paranormal Society had booked this investigation for us, and then normally I was the one that took care of that. So it's kind of weird. Um, so he told us not to do any research on it, which normally I like to do a lot of research on a location before I go in, and uh, just basically told us the address, and we showed up there. It was in the middle of December. Uh, and things really stood out for me when we got there. Uh, there was flies buzzing around. Uh, that was sub, you know, sub sub zero. Uh, there was no heat going on in the house, and it was uh, it falling apart. I mean, there was leaks. There it, there was broken windows. I mean, it was just not uh, as you can see in the picture. I mean, it, it was uh, not uh, not to what it looks like today for sure. Uh, needed a new roof, and uh, we were. You know, the first thing he had us do when we got there was watch the episode of A Haunting. It's called The Dark Forest, if anybody wants to check that out. Um, and basically uh, tells us the story of this family that moved in there in the 1970s and was tormented and uh, had sought counsel from a priest at St. Bonaventure University. Um, they ended up performing a structural exorcism on the house to try to rid the, the spirits from the house. <coughs> it didn't work, and then the family ended up leaving. Uh, they hightailed it out to California, San Jose, and then went to Oregon. And uh, the house had many people live there throughout time. And uh, then I came upon it you know, about six or seven, about seven years ago and did this investigation there. I mean, I remember watching that episode with him sitting there in the living room with one heat space heater running in this freezing house and looking at him and I said, are you effing kidding me right now? <laughs> you, you brought us into a house with a failed exorcism and didn't think that was kind of something you might want to tell us before <laughs> we came here, you know? Like, right. <laughs> I feel like to mentally prepare myself for these things. and uh, But it ended up being a very active night. Um, we had a lot of communications. It seemed like the spirits at the house wanted to reach out to us, wanted to communicate with us. Every piece of equipment had one off. <clears throat> and um, it was just an amazing night. And I became kind of infatuated with it. Um, when I found out they were tearing it down, I was, you know, I was upset. Um, I didn't want that to happen. You see it happen so often. And uh, Michelle, the house manager at the time, when, when it was going through the foreclosure process, reached out to me and she said, Dan, you need to buy this place. And, you know, I said, why don't you try convincing my wife, Michelle? You know, that's the <laughs> top, top one that we right. need to do. <laughs> but, uh, and I explained to her that we have a rental property down in the southern tier that, that looks like this yellow house right here with all the, <laughs> yeah, let's just jump right on that. Yeah, you know? this, so, this photo, I guess, was from 2011 and you bought it, what was it 2015, like four years later? Yeah. So I can't uh, imagine how much more disheveled it was four years later. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it was, it was bad. <laughs> Very, very bad. I mean, to the point where we actually had to replace most of the siding on the back of the house, you know, and facing the pond. The whole roof had to be torn off. 
been replaced. Um, on the back of the house, there was a, a beehive in the floorboards of Mary's room, and it had to add about 500,000 honeybees in there that had to be removed. <laughs> Black mold all throughout the kitchen. Um, you had the bathroom leaking. We had to do a complete tear out of the floorboards. We had to, had to put new, I mean, just basically re, rebuilt the house from the inside out, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah. How many thousands of honeybees did you have? It was like some crazy million. number. Yeah. It's insane. No, thanks. And you just, and you had them removed. You didn't, they, you didn't kill them. No. Yeah. That was important to me. Like I wasn't just going to kill them all. I mean, it's, uh, they're, everybody talks about how we need these honeybees so it was important to me to have it done the right way at any cost to save them so i had three different honeybee farmers come out and only one decided that they would do the job because they actually had to cut into the floorboard and remove it all because if you don't remove it all they'll come back and i think that's the problem that people were having um throughout the years trying to get rid of the bees was that they weren't removing the honeycomb and then they just come back and start it back up again so a new queen bee comes in and uh, so we had to actually remove it all, and then uh, we put. There's a honeybee farmer in Hinsdale now that sells haunted honey, <laughs> and we have. Um, and we've had to keep. They, they've tried to come back. It's 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 crazy because mm -hmm. bugs are really drawn to that room. Uh, flies, ladybugs, bees. Wa I mean, um, patching that old house up was just a crazy, crazy thing. You know, having to patch up every little nook and cranny. You know, to mm -hmm. make sure that they can't get in again. How long did that restoration take? It's not done yet. Um, I mean, oh. we're we, we're just finishing up redoing the bathrooms. Um, it's it's been in phases because we it's I've actually put more money into it than the mortgage was, um, trying to get this fixed up. And uh, you know, what we're doing is every time we have a tour, or every time we have a public overnight or a private overnight, the money that comes from the teams, uh, we're been saving that up and then reinvesting that back into the location so we can take back the land, take back the property, and uh, keep it on the up upkeep. So, and it's been working. The business plan behind it has been working pretty good. So, bravo to you for doing something like that because a lot of people see those places and they don't think to restore them. They just let them sit in their dilapidated state or let them get torn down. So, it wasn't, it was important for me to try to save it at least because <laughs> just of the activity that was there. And I knew that there was more story to this than just this exorcism, failed yeah. exorcism that happened. I mean, um, just going in there, we were getting not evil entities trying to communicate with us and uh, getting names. And I, I figured there had to be more to this property, more to this land. And boy, was I right. I mean, just in the research aspects of it that we've gotten done in the past four years, um, you know, dating it back to the 1700s. I mean, wow. it's crazy things have happened on this land and property. And uh, I don't know, we still don't know why it's happening. Uh, why everything's drawn there, but you know, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to figure that out in the long run with everybody's help coming in. It's not going to be just me figuring it out. It might be you. Could be Bill Reap that's in the chat room coming back there and figuring <laughs> it out. Maybe you'll figure something out for me, Mike, when you're there. There coming we go. In, you know, I mean, it's sure. Uh, yeah. we'll never see what, know. See what we might be able to do. You never know. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, good to hear Bill Reap is in the chat room. All right. We also have a uh, $5 super chat from Tom McNicholas. Says, Dad, uh, glad Dan made it to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. All right. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate that. So, um, Dan, you mentioned the uh, the research aspect of it. And I, I, have to, I have to ask you this because just doing so, and there's Megan Talbert, $5 super chat. Thank you very much, Megan. Um, I have to ask you because, and I, I've seen your presentation before when you know we've been at the events, which is very good. I know mm -hmm. You've talked about the history a lot, um, but you know somebody who just does like a, a Google search on Hinsdale House history, um, there are some sites out there that that rip into the history, and I know that you know from your talks that you've given, you've tried to clear some of that up. I know you've talked about, you know, trying to find the real history. So what, what's going on uh, with that? What, what's going on with the history of this place? Well, I mean, it's it's funny because the, the sites that are out there that have tried to rip the history of it, which are actually good researchers. Um, and, and, and part of the problem was is being able to get on the same level with the, everybody. The, the, the whole thing with this house is everybody needs to be on the same playing field. It's not one person doing the research and the other person saying this is right, that's right, blah, blah, blah. Everybody needs to put their two cents in. 
and uh, look at it. And, uh, you know, the, I know that there was one article uh, Cassidy Nichols wrote, and I, man, did I try to reach out to her for a long time. And we actually f finally sat down and had a beer together, and I commended her on her research because, you know, that's the type of stuff that I needed. She was amazing research. She worked at St. Bonaventure University, and she uh, was able to actually correct some of the wrongs information that I had received. And I'm, I'm just a person, you know, I'm, I can only go with what I have given to me or what I see. So if, if I did something wrong or I have something wrong, you know, I'd like to know that it's right so we can try to figure it out. And the great thing was is the research that she had um, allowed me to actually correct the timeline that I had and allow me to date the house back even farther and actually give maybe to some theories about the house that some truths about that, you know, and it's important to me, you know, uh, if, if you have something that you don't think I need to know, definitely reach out to me. I'm, I'm that type of a person where I'm, I, I don't have to sit on a high horse and, and, and think it's all about me. You know, it's, it's about the house and finding out the correct history and maybe what's making this tick and everybody working together is what's going to make that happen. So I, I always, I, whether it's bad or good, however it's presented, I always try to reach out to them and see what, where they're coming from, you know, and uh, the history is, is great. I, I have like three binders like this big uh, of Good. just maps and and I mean you name it it's we, we've been able to date it back so far uh, people that have lived in the house now that I actually have the house and was able to get the uh, deed I can actually see all the people that lived there there are families that lived there for a month three months you know two months two months and now I can try to reach out to them see what their deal was what happened to them you know I, I spoke to one lady that lived there for a month and she left all her stuff in the house because she said she didn't want what was there to know that they were leaving. I mean, it's... Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. crazy. Wow. So, um, I mean, you mentioned that they did an exorcism of the house and whatnot, uh, or, you know, to rid of spirits and it, it didn't work. Um, so what, I guess, I mean, because a lot of people will see that now or hear that and say, oh, well, that's got to be negative spirits, you know, and that's might not know a lot about the paranormal so um what do you what do you feel is is haunting the home and what types of spirits do you do you feel are there i feel like there's uh spirits from the past that lived in the house i feel that there is a negative entity there i feel like there's an elemental issue on the outside of the house not an issue per se but I, that we've we've caught pictures of things that we can't explain that look like little creatures in the woods and um, I think that the, the, the house or the location of the house is uh, an energy source of some kind. I mean, it's on, an, there's an underground waterway uh, that oh. feeds the pond. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a lot of things where you can think maybe energy is drawn. I've looked at uh, ley lines, and there's a crisscross right in the pond um, uh, of two different ley lines. Um, you know, I, it, it's the, the names that we've gotten. Um, date back to the you know 1800s early 1900s that that could possibly be fa family from the previous residents in the house as well and there's also it's also weird because we're getting names and stories of people that didn't live in the house that maybe live nearby uh, I don't know if they feel like maybe this is a, a way for them to reach out to us and let us know um, if there's a way for them to come and go it seems like there is mm -hmm. um, and somebody wrote that in the chat room portals um, you know that's one of the big things that a lot of the psychics say when they come in the house that there's a portal upstairs. Uh, nobody's been able to close this portal, uh, if that's the case. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of people that have tried, but I really feel like if we're ever going to clear or help the spirits that want to be helped, mm -hmm. it's going to take a lot more than just one psychic. It's going to take, because the stories from time to time are Wiccan, uh, Indian, you know, Catholicism, Christianity. Um, there's so many different levels to all the different stories of this house. I feel like we're going to need like a, a, an army of lay people to come <laughs> uh, from all different aspects to work together to try to figure this out. And hopefully that will happen at some point. But I do want to continue the research process uh, of it first before we know what, so we know what we're up against, you know, on every level. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a couple of questions coming in from the chat room. I do want to hit those real quick. Also, there's a uh, happy birthday down there to Shadowcat. So happy birthday, Shadowcat. And for those wondering where Vanessa is, she's in Ireland. So we have special co-hostess Katie Hopkins with us tonight. Um, but Brandy Starleeper asks, uh, Dan, is there a section of the house that's more haunted than other parts? No, it's funny because we 
uh, all the teams that have been coming there, and you'll see this, Mike, when you come, I keep like a diary. Um, so what I can do is I can have the teams, when they come in, write down and pinpoint the areas of the house that they're getting activity in when they're stay, spending the night or coming in for a, a tour. And if I went through the four years and, and put little X marks in the house and on the property of where um, a specific haunting was, it's there's nothing specific about it. I mean, it's you're getting activity in the basement. It's only 1,100 square foot house. And uh, it happens in the living room. It happens in the upstairs, the closet, Mary's room, Mike, you know, Mike's room. It happens everywhere in the house. So it's nothing specific. And I don't think you know what entity you're going to get. Uh, when you when you're there either um, you definitely there's this 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 scumbag uh, you know this darker I want to say sinister kind of energy that comes around and I always tell people when they come to try to ignore that maybe step away um, because I think what was happening is, is when you give it energy you're giving it energy when you acknowledge it and um, it, it comes around though and it does come around quite often and uh, it, I, I don't know what why it's there and this could probably be maybe be the same entity they were talking about in the 70s that they couldn't get rid of mm -hmm. so i don't know if it has to do with the property um why it's there how we can get rid of it um but definitely not just one section of the house or the, or the property it's funny too because even some of my neighbors say that they have things happening so it definitely is the, you know if it's happening at some of the neighbors up the hill um or something might property. be connected with the land yeah yeah absolutely yeah, was that land between you and neighbors all one person's property at one point? Yes. Um, so it was originally a 100-acre plot. Now, there's our properties up the hill that weren't part of the original property that are having are affected. But um, the original property was 100 acres. Now I have 10 acres of that. Trying to trying to get more of it, but there's a big field across the street, but the guy won't sell it to me. <laughs> Maybe someday. He knows I'm interested now. So. Yeah. so has there been any research of the land? I mean... Uh, is there known of any like multiple deaths, anything of that around the land that, you know, you see or hear civil war battlefield or anything like that. I don't know if there would have been any up, up around there, but um, anything that would. Interesting and interesting enough. Um, last year uh, when we were doing the septic system, when we had to replace the septic system in the ground, um, we had to dig up the whole backyard and uh, we found what I believe are ar arrowheads or spearheads in the ground that look like Indian spearheads. Mm -hmm. um, and I have those in the case inside of the uh, house for people to look at, touch, use during their investigations if need be. Um, so I, the way that I look at where the house sits, it's in the middle of a hill up high with a water source. Um, it would be an ideal place for a colony of Indians to stay because it, it's good for looking out to see if somebody's coming. Um, from down the hill, all around the hill, actually. Um, so uh, it could definitely have an element to that. And something something weird, too. So um, in removing some of the uh, the boards in the house, uh, when we were stabilizing the house, we had to remove some of the old boards back from the, from the 1700s. And uh, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Jeff Fentz who's actually caught a picture of the elemental out in the um, forest. But he also makes, like, portal boxes you know he uses wood and repurposes wood from haunted locations to make like spirit boxes and as he's cutting into this wood we find an old bullet an old bullet that's in the wood so this bullet i can't even imagine how old it is this this wood you know you're thinking it's probably from the 1700s and it's uh, you know we're having that analyzed too and uh it's crazy crazy to think about that that was in the house too you know well western new york i do know this um they, I mean, that's home to years and years and years of Seneca Indian history. So you can put two and two. I mean, Western New York is bound for that. So putting yeah. that kind of two and two together um, in the Buffalo Niagara area. So, yeah, I mean, Seneca's are there now, but I, I dating it back, I even see looking at the different tribes that were there. It could be maybe Runro. Indians uh, back from the 1700s, um, we, we found history of a, a, a Indian witch. So she was deemed a witch because she was a healer um, that was burned burned alive on the property as well. Oh, wow. Interesting. I mean, maybe we're cursed. I don't know. <laughs> hey, we have a uh, $5 super chat from trucker David Wise. Is Katie's book that I got at Paracon is amazing. Welcome back, Dan. Also, Tuesday nights are dedicated to HRM. Much love from Abby nice. and I. Thank you very much, David. Absolutely appreciate that. Um, 
Now, Dan, one of the last times that, uh, and I can't remember which event it was now because the entire year is just kind of a <laughs> wash, but yeah, it's all mixed together. But one of these events that we were at, um, you had talked about, was it some sort of medallions or something that you found in the walls? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is out now, but um, so as we started renovation of the bathrooms, um, we, we found that there were four layers of flooring in the bathroom. So the the tub and everything was built we found the original door for the house they used it as part of floorboard wow okay. and it, underneath the door there was these, this little compartment okay so it, just real real small little compartment inside this compartment was a carved bullhead okay so there that was bullhead number one um among the other things that we found um and then in the wall over by the sink there was another compartment and it looks like they were put there purposely, and it was another carved bullhead. I don't know what, what significance they have at this point. I don't know why they were put there. Maybe it was a protection thing. I, I really don't know at this point. But we have, you know, I, I haven't taken them from the house uh, just because, you know, I, if they were put there for a reason, I don't want to remove them Right. Um, just to kind of find out what the, the, the reason they were put there. And we found a letter from one of the dandy girls that was written and somehow got into the wall. Uh, we found uh, shreds of clothing that looked like they could have blood on them. Uh, we found uh, just just the, we found like I'm trying to think what else we found that was in there. We found some dead animals, but I mean, <laughs> you'll just, get that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> significant significant things. I mean, normally they stuffed it with clothing. They used clothing for insulation because they didn't really have anything besides sawdust. But this is a full jacket. It wasn't like a shredded up clothing. This is a full jacket that looks like it has blood stains on it, like it was shoved in there to hide it. Uh, and um, I, it, it, part of me wants to just rip apart all the other walls to see what else is hidden. Right. But part of me says, okay, we've we've been given enough to try to figure out what this is. I mean, and talking to Tim Shaw. He says they look African, and, and that would just open up a whole other door, like a whole other like African. If they're really African, like why would those be there? You know, what was practiced? Who put them there? Why? You know, what time frame are they from? So, definitely have some work to do on those, and um, trying to figure that out. Oh, definitely. Um, we have a question here from Megan Talbert. Uh, she asked, "Dan, do you believe anything has ever followed you home from the house?" No. And I, and I truly trust that. I, I feel like, I don't know, in all the years I've been doing this, I feel like I know how to walk away from a situation. I can feel it happening. And I don't know if it's a gift that I have or, you know, many psychics have told me I have like a, an army of angels following me around. And it's funny because when I was at the house the last time, um, there was a psychic there and we were doing a session in the living room and there was a, a that negative spirit was coming out and she she got up and she looked and she, I go what she goes they're here to help you know there's a the white lights coming in and I, you know I I'm gonna knock on wood you know but it's never happened to me you know and uh, hopefully that, that that stays the case but I try to stay in uh, you know as as positive that I can when I'm in a location. If I feel like something negative has happened. I try to walk away from it and not acknowledge it. And I always, you know, bless myself before I go my, the way that I feel like I'm, you know, making sure that I'm safe, you know, uh, for me and my family. Because if it affected my family, that would be, I'd probably have to step away for a while. And to this point, it hasn't. And there's actually been some workers that have come to my house and protected my house as well. So I, my family home. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I yeah, know. I would totally understand that. Um, yeah, once it starts affecting the family, then, you know, that's when you it have can, to step back a little bit. It can really consume you for sure. So it's good you have that that balance and that, that structure to keep it away. That's that's great. Yeah, like I said, knock on wood. You never know when something could happen. You know, you've seen the best of the best. Even, you know, Bill Reap, when he came to the house, he said it took him, it took him from a, from left field. You know when he was there so mm -hmm. yeah uh, tim Schoen is asking why do you think the negative entity lingers around the house i don't know i don't know why it's there or why it keeps coming back to him um it's it's something that i hope to find out and figure out at some point mm -hmm. you know i mean that's what we're we're all there we've gotten some names uh, i don't want to acknowledge his name but um we have if you read the books when you're in the house we have some of the teams have come up with the same name so it could be um, and then hopefully when the time is right, we'll be able to get it out of there and battle it out of there. 
I mean, because at the end of the day, that would be a really nice cabin to hang out in with a fishing pond if I could get that cleaned up. But I, until that's done, <laughs> I'm not I'm not going there and spending the night too many nights alone. So yeah, you have the pond in the back, and uh, so do things happen out there at the pond? They do, and actually, uh, before 1969, when the 100 acres was purchased, the the person that bought it, Donna Reese, she subpartialed the properties out into 10 acres. She built ponds on all the properties. And um, it's funny that we find out that this pond at Hinsdale was not dug by the contractor, it was dug by the family. Um, there was a barn there that was torn down. Um, there may, we're, we're trying to figure out, there may be a family burial plot that was behind oh. the barn from the McMahon O'Brien family that lived there. And uh, So you may have you some know, graves on the property. We may have some graves. Um, we've had reach out from the family asking if they could come visit these graves, and we don't even know where they are. So we're going to actually be doing, um, in September, we're going to be doing some ground penetrating radar on the property to try to see if there are, in fact, graves over there or if anything's been uncovered and maybe covered up. Um, that's a, right around the time that Ed and Lorraine Warren came out to the house as well from the records that we have from them. Oh. So they knew something was going on there. Yeah. What and did the Warrens have to say about it? it? Yeah, so I was just uh, the the only quote that I have from Lorraine because I've never got to meet her is is when uh, Nick Roth called her on during paranormal lockdown, and uh, they asked for advice. Uh, he asked for advice. You know what what should I do? I'm at the Hinsdale house. She goes, go to church, go oh. to church. Well, wow. okay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> most of the most of the stuff most of the stuff that uh, that is protected because of the living right now. The, that wow. involves them. It's locked up with the Catholic mm -hmm. Church, so it's not something that we can get at to actually look at the records, right. unfortunately. And it may be locked up forever. I don't know. Uh, as long as there's family members alive that was, that it affected back in the 70s, uh, I don't think they'll open those boxes for us, unfortunately. Yeah, um, maybe some years down the road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It makes you wonder, you know, if that was if the one that you talk about that is the negative energy there, if that's what Lorraine Warren picked up on, or if it was something else, uh, the possibilities are endless. It seems like, you know, like yeah, I mean, I think about it back then before the movie, the exorcist came out to even fathom something like that being in your home. I mean, you're going to almost probably say it's demonic if you're right. a Christian. So yeah, the, D word. Yeah. <laughs> the big D word. Yep. <laughs> well, I, and I, I wasn't even going to, yeah, I mean, that's what yeah, I I had kind of been in the, my mind too. Um, you know, was it something that they thought was demonic? Was they it something did. That was malicious? They definitely, or, they okay. definitely thought it was demonic, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't I don't think it is. I mean, I've done been there enough to say that. Mm -hmm. you know, I've been to enough. I've been to a demonic demonic haunt, haunting. Sorry, but it's, it's been, <laughs> a, been a long day. Yeah. But um, I've been to one, and I've been through a, an exorcism before. Oh, wow. and, and I know, and I don't feel it's the same type of energy that's in this house that is was in the one the residentials that I participated in. Okay. Um, it feels negative, sure. um, but I don't. It could be just a bastard of a spirit. Uh, it, could, it could be something completely different. I don't know. Maybe it's not from this earth. I, I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. A good How question did... here from. Uh, sorry. Uh, Katie, uh, but a good question here from Brandy Starleaper. She's wondering if you find the graves, we would put a marker there so the family knows where the graves are. That's what I will put all full force into. Um, mm -hmm. If if we find graves, um, I will honor those people, uh, honor the graves. I'll section it off. I mean, I'll take all funds that I was going to put towards uh, building a cabin mm -hmm. for a paranormal like a paranormal base, and we can always do that later to honor this, these families and the graves that are there for sure. Yeah. Cool. cool. Go ahead, Katie. It would be as if they're even in caskets or anything. Yeah. I mean, hope if they are there, hopefully we'll be able to find out. Mm -hmm. we're bringing in some of the best researchers to look at this. So um, hopefully we'll have answers for everybody on that so aspect. I cut you off. <laughs> What's that? I said I cut you off. Go ahead. No, I just said hopefully we'll get some answers on that soon. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that, I'm definitely interested to hear if you got anything on that for sure. So, Stay tuned. Stay tuned, everybody. <laughs> Stay tuned. You said that was happening this fall? Remember. Okay. Okay, cool. So coming up here pretty soon then. Yeah. That's an exciting time, actually. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. I, had to, I had to section off a, a four or five days for them to come down to do it. So, wow. Cool. 
Um, from Tom McNicholas, he wants to know, did the restoration cause any angry spirits that wrestled anything up? I, I People ask me that all the time, and, and, and in a lot of ways, uh, when you go into other hauntings and you start changing things up, it seems to ramp up the activity. But for the Hinsdale house, um, it was always busy. So I can't really tell if there was a difference or not. <laughs> um, I do, I, I've had many psychics say that they've liked what I've done. They like that I'm preserving it. They like me to keep going with it. So I, you know, so I guess I'm happy if they're happy, you know. Good, good. And Robert Hanna is wondering if you see a lot of apparitions in the house. Yes. You know, we've caught a lot. I have a lot of pictures. If you guys go to the, I have a page on Facebook, the Hinsdale House Restoration Project, or just the Hinsdale House. And uh, we have uh, pictures on there, entities that we've caught with cameras, just, you know, regular Canon cameras, or we've caught them on our, we have uh, static cameras that are set up there that we'll sometimes stream online that people can watch. We've caught them on there as well. Um, tons of them, videos, everything, you know, so we've, we've caught them on the outside of the house, inside of the house, all around the property. So cool. Cool. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we spent uh, probably a good half of the uh, first half of the show on just the Hinsdale house, but that's not the only thing you have going on. You have a lot of other projects that you're working on uh, with video space. You have within these walls, you have um, what's the new one? The Ghost Finders. I'm going to be joining. Finders. The, the, yeah, they're they're on uh, Amazon Prime and Roku and over. In, uh, they have a couple cable access stations that they're on, but they're you know Amazon Prime, Roku, pretty good. Get to almost everybody. Everybody has those. So, um, and it's the longest independent running paranormal show on on the planet right now. And I did a couple of episodes with them uh, last season. And I just clicked with them. And it's it's really weird because there's a Wiccan, there's a witch, there's a English psychic medium, and then me. I can come in with my paranormal stuff and and kind of work all together with them, both of them, and and uh, at the locations that we're going to be going to. I know we're going down to New Orleans to film in October for the first episode of season ten. I'll be with them at the Silicon Valley Comic Con coming up in a few weeks out in San Jose, which is which is really cool. And uh, to, uh, just another another you know aspect of my life i guess to keep it busy i guess <laughs> this is pretty busy heading back out west so okay so that's ghost finders and within these walls that was the one on viddy space right yeah, viddy space and that's also on amazon prime uh that is that is me and a couple of my teammates from the greater west new york paranormal society just doing what we do um that when nick roth came to me and asked me to do a show on viddy space um, he had asked me, you know, it's your concept, what you want to do and how you want to present it. And um, I, my, my biggest thing was is, is getting money for locations to help with the renovations and upkeep of locations. So when I did go to, to locations to investigate, um, I wanted, you know, we have an hour live show. In an hour, there's a chance that we're probably not going to get any paranormal activity, you know, unlike some of the shows that are on regular cable networks. Um, but... You know, my, my point was show people maybe some of the newfangled equipment that we have. Uh, if we get something great, if we don't, at least we're going to give a good history lesson of the location and allow people to know to come check out a ghost hunt, uh, maybe do an overnight there and help with uh, give, getting money for the restoration projects of these locations so we have them for us for the future to continue to go to and investigate. So that's basically the premise of that show. Absolutely. Um, I have to ask you, though, where's the uh, where's the name come from? I've always wondered about that. What, within these walls? Within these walls, yeah. Because it was always something that I would say. I wonder what's within these, you know, because you always think about, like, what type of energies could be stored within the locations that you're at and uh, the different layers that are possibly within the walls or within the floorboards of the locations. And I just thought it was kind of a cool name to, to kind of represent what we were going after. Cool, cool. Do, do you have any uh, plans to... Uh, to keep going with that I, I don't know if you yeah, have another actually, season we, or what's, what's going on with that yeah season two uh, we're filming season two we have uh, four episodes done already um, and I I know that they're saving a lot of the newer stuff for fall to bring out you know, they, they did release one of the episodes uh, last month uh, for season two but uh, yeah we have four, four more ready to go and I bet you they'll be out around fall time Okay, so like in time for the Halloween season? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
It just becomes a busy time of year. Everybody gears up for that. So a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know how that goes because, like, with us, we're always trying to get a bunch of books out by Halloween, and it's rough. No, but you know, no <laughs> yeah, no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Rick Gabbard is wondering when the Hinzo House was built. Uh, eight seventeen, or sorry, eighteen fifty-three is uh, what we have by the Everett's brothers. And it's funny. There's a. You want me to tell the story of the Everett's brothers? Sure. Go ahead. <clears throat> so. As you said at the beginning of the show, there was, um, you know, maybe I had some misinformation and people like to, people, people seem to like really want to dig into you when you don't have the right, you know, something not right, you know, like instead of reaching out and, and trying to fix it. But um, I did have the timeline of the, of the Hinsdale house incorrect because of a misspelling of a name. Oh, wow. And uh, when I did actually end up reaching out to Cassidy and sitting down with her, she showed me the errors of my ways and allowed us to actually date the house back to um, 1853. Now there's some, some folklore that goes along with the Hinsdale house about these brothers that lived in the house um, and they would basically lure people in off the stagecoach trail um, there was a way station up on the uh, prop next, next property and uh, they would basically kill them, rapes and steal their goods from the, from the stagecoaches uh, hold their bodies in the basement or the crawl space of the house and then in the winter after the winter thaw they would bury them out in the hills so I guess that would be something else that we'll find out if we say any dead some bones out there now Clara uh, from the 1970s said her dogs were bringing bones in um, from out by the pond so oh, wow. we, she, she never had them tested though so she, we don't know if they were human or deer bones mm -hmm. but uh, um the, so there were supposedly these brothers that lived in the house, and because of my not having the information correct, uh, could never find any brothers owning the house or anything like that until we corrected that. And then we find out that these Everett's brothers actually built the house. Now, I don't, you know, I have no way to prove that they killed or pillaged people. They were iron workers and, um, you know, but it's just funny that there's folklore of the house, you know, how things get passed on from generation to generation. Oh yeah, uh, and but then of course we get EVP saying I'm dead, I'm buried. Help find me, things like that in the house, and uh, so I guess that probably will be a, a folklore forever because I don't think there's any way to debunk that or figure that out with the way that they kept history books back then. But um, you know, there, there, there's the folklore of the two brothers, and there, boom, 1853. You know, so who knows? Interesting. It's interesting. Folklore is interesting, but I do want to make sure that people know that there's a difference between the folklore and the truths of right. the house. You know, the deaths that actually did happen there. So there were deaths that did happen on the property and around the property. So, what's the oldest picture you have of it? Um, I do have some pictures from uh, in black and white. You know, from 1950s. I don't okay. know whenever cameras came up because I did end up reaching out to some of the family from the McMahon O'Briens that lived there for almost uh, 80 years. And they mm -hmm. were actually able to bring some pictures of the house back in its heyday with the barn in the back and the horses. And mm -hmm. there was actually a picture of a wedding that happened there as well. Oh, wow. It was really cool. Do you know if they added on the section? So if it was just the... Yes. Okay. I was say it looked like it was, it was added or... Uh... It was originally just the one area, the one building. Huh? It had one bedroom and then uh, a pantry. And okay. there was an outhouse, and then they added the living room and the other bedrooms on after. That's why mm -hmm. when you walk in there, you'll notice the stairs are super steep. They're definitely not up to code of what we we'll <laughs> consider um, stairs nowadays, but um, I guess they're grandfathered in. Uh, but, yeah, you can t see the difference from the one area to the other area for sure. Mm -hmm. So we have a uh, comment from the chat. This is actually from a little bit earlier from Bree Jones. She's she's a psychic. She regularly watches our show. She says, I have an image in my head of hands coming up from a pond, a lot of hands reaching from under the water. Is this possibly connected to Hinsdale? Probably. I mean, that's what we're talking about. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, this is funny because when people decide that they're going to come here or we talk about it, a lot of people get images and visions of the house. And uh, after I get done talking about it on a show, people will reach out to me and say, this this ever happen or you know start asking me questions about it because they're seeing images or um when teams go there they'll tell me you know we thought about this before we you know as soon as we booked the house and it's just like it's like it's calling out to people you know it's it's, it's weird mm -hmm. so i was saying i'm trying to channel my inner vanessa 
<laughs> so disconnected. I don't know. Maybe I need to have the Southern accent or something. And I, but I'm dear friends with Vanessa, so I can say this. But like, <laughs> I, come on, I, I, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Katie trying her best Vanessa like imitation. Yeah. Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've been trying to like tune in, and I've been so disconnected. But no, I, yeah, I think the, I mean, drownings in the pond. Sure, why not? There's stories about that. I, I don't know. We're going to have, uh, you know, hopefully in September, we're going to have the pond dove as well. And you know who I'm bringing in for that, Mike. Uh, is Lee finally getting up there? Yep. Awesome. I was going to ask about that because I know he was talking a while ago about getting up there and getting the pond. So uh, yeah, that'd we be have, great. Uh, yeah, we're going to, uh, from the day I met him, I knew that that was something I wanted him to do, but I just want to be able to do it right. Yeah. And I want everything to be documented and filmed properly. And yeah. if he comes up with that pond with, man. Yeah, for those in the uh, audience that don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about Lee Ehrlich, who is a very good friend of ours. He's another Haunted Road Media author, but um, he is a world-class scuba diver, and he specializes in uh, deep-sea salvage. So um, for him to go, go down into a pond and see what's there, that is just right up his alley. And uh, you never know, he might actually witness some paranormal activity down there because he's actually seen some of these old shipwrecks and, and whatnot activity going on down there in yeah. the water i mean he's he's gotten evps from little pockets of air that have been underneath the in the shipwrecks for hundreds of years you know i mean the little air pockets yeah so cool yeah it's really wild who would ever thought you know he's such he thinks such outside the box that's why i love him <laughs> oh i know i mean he was um he taught us a method of you know water-based evps that at Mineral Springs there, just we were getting voices off of the water from the fountain. And I know it sounds crazy, but you know, they were legitimately answering our questions and you couldn't even really call them EVPs or disembodied voices that, you know, we were able to capture on the audio. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So I look forward to seeing what he comes up with, uh, from the pond. Yeah. 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 I'll definitely want to see that. So, and Megan Talbert is asking when, uh, Lee's coming up there for that. That'll also be in September. Uh, I just got to get the yeah. got to get the dates worked out, and we'll pick a date that works for him and have him up there as well. Cool. I'm gonna have like a whole a couple of weeks there. Well, I'll have a, a film crew there to document everything that we're doing, and um, it'll be it'll be cool. So it sounds like September's gonna be pretty busy at the Hinsdale House. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as if it wasn't busy enough already. We're you know, filming. For, we're gonna film two weeks worth of uh, experiments and cool things there so to try to see what we can come up with nice nice so what are the um you know as far as like the the restoration and fixing up parts of it what's next on the docket for for that um what i have next on the docket is um because i'm you know a big paranormal researcher and i'm a big geek um i want to build actually a cab two cabins uh one which will house um a museum of some of the artifacts that we've uncovered. You know, I have the chalice from the exorcism. You know, I have cool things that people need to see, the history, um, all the stuff from the teams that have been there that we can share. I want it to be a plethora of information for, for the, the teams that come there to be able to utilize and use when they're there to try to get evidence. And then the other thing, um, because it's such a small house, uh, one of the biggest things for me coming with the team would be a noise, you know, like having a team on the outside of the house at the fire talking, maybe, you know, having your evidence debunked. So by having an additional uh, cabin that's going to be adjacent to the other where the house is, wiring the house through the cameras and allowing teams to actually view the investigation going on from a distance as opposed to being, you know, on the outside of the house, um, it would be a cool base camp. A base camp. Yeah, base, base camp. camp. There you go. So, um, that's basically <laughs> kind of what I'm going to do next. I just had a driveway put in. Uh, it's never had a driveway in its life. Um, but we've had a lot of issues with, with cars going into ditches and stalling. Hmm. And um, this, this we made a parking lot now so we can actually take, you know, 10 cars in, in the parking lot of the house. So there's a lot of, lot of parking for people now. And then uh, one of the other projects that I just had done uh, within the past month um, there's a hill in the back of the house that goes up to the forest and there's a lot of activity up in this forest um, we want investigators to go up there but it was the last straw the last time I went up that hill I had my geo box made it up the hill okay um, but when I'm coming down the hill I slipped 
boy, did I fall on my ass, uh, and it hurt like oh. because I had the geo box like this, and I and whatever body parts were hitting rocks or trees or anything like that, I did not let that geo box hit the ground. I'm like, man, <laughs> I got to get stairs put in here. And actually, it was a uh, a lot of people had fallen, and uh, so we actually had the the, the hill stepped. We brought oh. limestone in, old hmm. railroad ties, and uh, it's now it's stairs to get nice. to the hill so you can't fall. And we also put about four tons of limestone in over by the pond as well, um, just because it, the, the, the pond keeps filling up so high and it, it, the, the groundwater was saturated. So we wanted to make sure that there was like a bridge mm -hmm. so you could get over to the property to investigate. So now there's a bridge of limestone there. Oh, cool. So let me ask you this. You had mentioned earlier about, I guess it was a, a previous owner whose dog was finding bones. Was that from the pond area or up there by the... Uh, by the forest no that was by the she said it was by the pond by the pond okay i just asked because i've done um the fox hollow farm before where there's all kinds of bones human bones out in the in the woods there and they're still to this day collecting them so i was just it's just yeah. kind of struck me as maybe the dog was getting from there but the pond still would be an interesting area yeah, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that needs to be unearthed by the pond. When they dug that pond, I think that uh, we found actually the remnants of an old milk truck and some milk bottles on the oh, one side of the truck. truck? Yeah, wow. like the, from Hinsdale. So I don't know how, if that was in the barn and they just said, the hell with it, bury it. <laughs> uh, but um, we found, I have some pretty cool old milk jugs that were not, that not broken, which are awesome, that oh. I have on display. Um, so I feel like there was a lot of stuff from the barn that they just kind of buried. I found like pieces of the barn. Uh, there was a, a team there that was that I allowed to actually do some metal detecting on the property and found some pretty cool stuff there. We found an old horseshoe. <coughs> so cool. Um, yeah, Zip Davis was asking when you were doing the grading around there, did you unearth any artifacts? And it sounds like you unearthed quite a bit. Yeah, I got tons of stuff that I want people to be able to see and put their hands on and, and use so cool so it's like you almost have your own little museum going on now with all these different artifacts yep. you've uncovered that's really exactly. cool exactly yep um question here from grand old folks that's betty Lange. she asks does the house feel different in the summer compared to winter besides for the clothes i'm wearing no i mean it, it's it's the same you know it doesn't seem like it experiences uh the, th the changes in temperature because the first time I went there there were flies buzzing around in the summer you'll see some flies buzzing around I mean it's uh it was below zero there was one little there's a space heater in there and there's flies buzzing around like it's middle of the summer so I don't really feel like there's a, a difference uh in going in in the winter or the summer so a similar activity going on no matter what yep okay did somebody die of a head trauma yes who said that? Is that you picking it up on, Katie? <laughs> I kept getting it. Vanessa. Yes. <laughs> She's channeling <laughs> Vanessa. <laughs> That's got me. Um, See? I, Perfect fill-in for Vanessa. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> I kept getting dizzy. I don't know. And I just kept hearing head trauma. So let's, let's, head. Tell, let's tell the story. Let's Go tell for it. Story. Tell the story. <laughs> so Michael Dandy, he was uh, the, the only son of Clara and Phil Dandy that grew up, that was living there in the 1970s during all this turmoil, uh, got into a, a really bad car accident uh, with his buddy on McMahon Road, right up the, up the hill from the house there. Um, he was in the hospital. Um, he was supposed to die, didn't die, and uh, he, uh, he came out of it. Uh, you know, he, he was good up until he, he died two years ago. He got into another car accident, a minor one, was in the hospital. And uh, Clara had just, Clara, the mother, she had just broken her back. Mm -hmm. um, she couldn't get to the hospital to be with him. And he ended up passing away in his sleep from a brain aneurysm. Uh, and the doctor said it was possibly from a previous accident that he had. So she is convinced that the house got him. You know, it was a brain aneurysm from that original head injury that he had from back in the 1970s when he was driving that car. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, if that, if there's been so much into that, I mean, like some people give the house its own personality. You know, some people will say the house this, the house that. Greg and Dana Newkirk and the haunt me crew were up there filming and they took a really unique approach to this place and uh, 
if, if anybody wants to check that out, haunt me on YouTube. There's a two part series on the Hinsdale house and, uh, they went at it as though the house was its own, had its own being, you know, and they said, I don't want to speak to anybody but the house. And they got EVPs asking to speak to the house. I mean, you guys have to go check that out. Interesting. And, and, uh, I, I, one of the big things that they got were, uh, what do you want from people on an EVP? And it came back with energy. Like, oh, what if this hmm. is, what if this house is calling out to all of us to get energy to continue, you know, and I'm the conduit of that for them. And that's why they leave me alone. Mm-hmm. You know, I, that's creepy to think about, like, could that possibly really happen? You know, that's interesting. Uh, the, our buddy Lee, who we were just talking about before, tried uh, something similar with the Goldenrod showboat where um, he was actually trying to tap into the energy of the boat and talk to the boat while he was there. So it was an uh, interesting experiment that he that he was trying there. Unfortunately, Goldenrod, of course, is gone. Um, Megan Talbert here has a question. I know she has to be referencing our good friend, uh, Coyote Chris Sutton. She <laughs> asks, do you find drumming affects the activity at the house? Yes. Now, drumming, drumming it seemed to like calm it down. Though when Chris was doing mm. it, Chris has been there twice uh, and did a couple drumming circles and uh, did a peace offering to the native spirits in the in the land, and it seemed to help as far as any type of negative anecdotes go at the house. Um, the funny thing is, though, even dating back to the 1970s, uh, Clara talks about it in her book. You know, you hear drumming coming from the woods. You'll hear it sounds like Jesuit chanting and whistles, like there's something going on up there. But when we go to explore and find out where it's coming from, it's from no, you can't find it. It's like it's trying to find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And it's funny that she talked about that in her book Echoes of a Haunting, um, that you can purchase on Amazon or if you, I have copies of it if you guys are interested in actually reading what this family went through. Um, it's it's funny like some of the stuff that she's experiencing in this house we're still experiencing to this day um on the outside of the house the inside of the house it's, it's crazy uh, it's just continuing to happen oh pretty wild um brandy star leaper asks have you run into any animal spirits on the property absolutely um Clara, the dandy family that lived there, she actually had uh, a raccoon for a pet, dogs, many dogs that have lived there. Um, there's a story of this family that lived there. Um, I spoke spoke to the lady, and she said that she had a dog, and um, it, was, it was a lab, and it was very loyal. It was one of those types of dogs where when you walked, it walked. When you sat, it sat. Um, it didn't leave your side, and she said one day it got up, ran out of the house, and ran in front of a car like committed suicide which was very unlike this dog Mm -hmm. um we have caught um if you go to the again the hinsdale house restoration project or the the hinsdale house page on facebook we have some pictures up there um we have some pictures of of a dog that we've caught coming in out of the kitchen we have a picture videos of what looks to be like a groundhog of some kind popping up from a blanket um so we definitely have uh, animal energies there as well spirit energies there uh that we've caught actually on camera and video. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Bree Jones is asking, is there a German shepherd dog spirit there? It's funny because the, the picture that we caught, if I were to place what type of dog it was, um, it looks like a German shepherd. Does it? Yeah. That's interesting. It's it's distorted. It's distorted in the picture, but that's the first thing that comes to mind uh, for me when I looked at that picture was either like a, and then the other one looks like more like kind of like a St. Bernard or some, I, I don't know, but they're, they're cool nonetheless, you know? So what's your, because we're getting down to the end of the wire here. Um, your Not overall, ready. yeah, I know only like six and a half minutes left here. It goes by quick. And you know that you've done enough of these shows. Come on. <laughs> just, it just seems like we just started talking. But. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, and actually, I'll ask this first before I ask my question. Um, Megan Talbert, has anyone actually brought a dog to an investigation? There, there has been a few teams that have dogs that are trained to paranormal investigate that have utilized that during an investigation. So it's good. And it actually, it's, it's worked out for them. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so my question is, what's your, um, when it's all said and done? What's your overall dream for this house? Where's it going? My overall dream, number one, is to help any spirits that want to be helped. You know, if there's spirits that are stuck there, 
that have been there throughout time that don't want to be there and we can help them to go to the light or go to wherever they need to go to um you know be happy um we i want that to happen for any spirit that's there um and uh, to to clear the land of any uh spirits that may want to pass on or move for move on you know they, they i don't think that any spirit should be stuck and i feel like that's what's happening at the house i feel like it's kind of like a succubus for energies there and uh ultimately that would be my goal is to to get rid of this negative entity and help any spirits that we can so it could be a place that's livable nice nice interesting comment here from the uh, chat room so i had to bring the picture back up mm -hmm. uh b3 airspace brought up uh, a pic of the house and her cat hissed at it and left the room nice interesting, interesting. yeah yeah must not want to come there <laughs> Have you I'd had? Be I'd be cool to have be able to read the cat's mind and think why is it? What did it pick up? You know, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a device we could attach to its head, and you know, somebody needs to invent that. Yeah, read some sort of signals. Oh, you know, uh, the Native American history. Uh, Daisy is asking about that, but <clears throat> in the chat room. But yeah, we've 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 tapped into the Native American history as well. Like I said, we found a dated it back to the Renro Indians back in the 1700s on the property. We found Native American folklore or Native American items buried. And we've also uh, found out about this possible Indian witch that was burned. So, I mean, it, it, it's funny because the, the natives there aren't one to come out and talk about it too much. You know, it's, it's not, uh, it's like their history, their, their past. They don't want to let, let us really know too much about it, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to dig more into that and find people that will speak with us. Yeah, I was about to ask as you were uh, talking about that. So the the current natives haven't been able to, or maybe they refuse to affirm or right. deny anything. They're very secretive about it. You know, when uh, somebody from outside their culture comes in and asks, starts asking questions about the past and how things are done you know they don't they're not too uh open to allowing us to know that interesting uh, yeah i mean to me you'd think at least if you had part of the story wrong about the native american activity there that they would at least deny and say no that wasn't it they might not tell you what the truth was but maybe they would at least say no that's not true but they're not even doing that huh no well interesting but I think we'll be able to hopefully find, you know, through our research, find some that will open up to us. Yeah, I hope so, because there is a very strong, you know, Native American history there. You're finding arrowheads and things like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You would you would think that, um, you know, you could try to get some of that history. <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, to, that would be that would be awesome. Actually, mm -hmm. that'd be cool. Yeah, but all we can find out is what the white man wrote in the books so far. So. Right, and we know back in the day how sketchy that's going to be. So yeah, yeah, that's too bad. I mean, there's there is a large amount of history before, yeah, but yeah, before the white man settled that um, that is there. We just don't know what it is. So Seneca Indians, I think, date can date back almost a thousand years up there. Yeah, it's. Yeah, <laughs> they don't. They don't open that history up to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, all right, uh, Dan, we are getting down toward the end of the show here. So, um, you want to let everybody know where they can find you, get information about the house, your shows coming up, all that great stuff. Yeah, everything's on one page. So, if you go to Daniel Class, just like my name is spelled dot com, <clears throat> there'll be links to all my social media pages. Um, uh, how to get to Viddy Space, how to watch shows on Amazon Prime, and if you're interested in coming down for a tour um, or maybe doing an overnight with your team or if you got a group of people that are seasoned investigators that want to come down and see what you can pick up, you know, shoot me a message. I'm not hard to find. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Uh, I put my phone number out there, call me. You know, it's out there somewhere. So. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you very much, Dan, for... Uh, Showing, showing up, appearing on the show, talking about the Hensdale house. Uh, was